Okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, some discussion questions around young Goodman Brown and his journey and some of the details of what he learns about himself and the changes that occur in his character once he discovers um, or has this experience of going to this witch meeting in the forest. Um, but if we think about uh, some of the larger questions, uh, one of the things we can think about is this idea of conflict. Uh, so you could see uh, the conflict in this story as being both external and internal. Uh, so externally, uh, he's on this journey walking through the forest with the old man. Um, and it's the old man who is sort of trying to convince uh, young Goodman Brown to uh, come along with him and to keep going on this journey. And at certain times he'll ask Goodman Brown if he wants to take his staff. Uh, so there is this uh, sort of implicit uh, temptation uh, that the old man is offering young Goodman Brown to take part in uh, this ceremony and to become a kind of disciple of the devil. Um, so he'll say, are you feeling tired? Do you need help? Here, take my staff. And it's almost like if, if young Goodman Brown grabs this uh, serpent staff that he's going to be um, welcoming sin into himself. So he's, he, young Goodman Brown will say things like, uh, faith will keep me back. I'll, I'll return to faith. Um, I, I should turn back now. Uh, but he doesn't actually turn back to faith. He keeps going uh, on this walk into the kind of heart of darkness uh, of the forest. And he makes discoveries along the way. Uh, so it's also going to be an internal conflict uh, for him that surfaces when he experiences uh, becoming a witness to this witch ceremony. So he's going to learn things about his community, but it's also going to be a process of uh, losing his faith, uh, losing his belief in other people, in the goodness of others, including his wife. Uh, so he'll also lose faith in faith, uh, <laughs> which is part of the allegorical, playful uh, kind of thing that Hawthorne is doing with names. Um, so he makes certain discoveries. So what are the steps of the journey in young Goodman Brown's disillusionment? What specific things does he learn along his journey? So we've talked a little bit about a couple of them. So he learned about his father and his grandfather's actions, uh, their cruelty uh, in persecuting others. Um, he learns about so his family's involvement in um, you know, committing murder and persecution of others. And then he learns about um, some of his spiritual advisors, so people who have provided him with moral authority in the past or when in, during his childhood. He learns that they're also friends of the devil and part of this secret uh, witch uh, community that lives within, his, within uh, the Puritans. Um, so he comes across Goody, uh, Goody Cloyce, who taught him his uh, catechism. He believes that she's a good Christian woman, um, that she's very moral and upright and uh, a very moral person. Um, but it turns out that she's good friends with the devil, with the old man uh, that they're walking with. And she, in fact, comes across as a witch. Um, basically, so she was talking about her broom. Uh, so the devil uh, meets her on this journey and says, uh, Then Goody Cloyce knows her old friend, observed the traveler, confronting her and leaning on his writhing stick. Ah, forsooth, and it is your worship indeed, cried the good dame. Yea, truly it is, and in the very image of my old gossip, Goodman Brown, the grandfather of that silly fellow that now is. But would you worship believe it? My broomstick hath strangely disappeared, stolen, and I suspect by that unhanged witch Goody Cory, and that too when I was at all anointed with the juice of smallage and sinkafoil and wolf's bane. 
mingled with fine wheat in the fat of a newborn babe, said the shape of old Goodman Brown. Um, so in that description, we have uh, indication that uh, they're not, it's not an old man, it's a kind of a figure, he's, he appears, he's in the appearance of Goodman Brown's uh, grandfather. Uh, so that's how the devil is making his appearance, so he's kind of manifested as uh, young Goodman Brown's grandfather. Uh, that's why they look so alike. And um, he's he's just, he's sort of a shapeshifter, right? So it's the personification of evil in uh, this figure of this old man. And then uh, Goody Cloyce is revealed to be uh, somewhat of a witch herself. She's been anointed uh, in this evil uh, community and her broomstick has disappeared so she, she the way she's described cackling her laughter the broomstick and then talking about this other woman spreading rumors that there's an unhanged witch of Goody Corey uh, suggests that she's a witch herself um, and part of this evil uh, community um, so this is one of the things, or one of the experiences along the journey that kind of blows uh, young Goodman Brown's mind that he could, you know, have believed this woman was virtuous and pious and holy, and here she is, friends with the devil. Um, so there's other um, experiences along the way. Uh, mostly it's seeing religious figures from his past uh, as part of this community of sin. Um, so he'll come across the minister and Deacon Gookin, uh, and they're on their way to the middle of the forest, and they're talking about taking in a woman uh, into the communion. So there's rumors uh, that there's gonna be new recruits uh, that are gonna be accepted into this community of witches and devil worshipers. And uh, he, young Goodman Brown, he's, he's suffering, he's sad, uh, he is struggling, he doesn't want to go forward, but he's also sort of compelled um, by the old man to keep going. Uh, so there is this element of temptation, and he's trying his hardest to stand firm against the devil, not to move. Uh, not to go forward, uh, but to make his way back to his faith, uh, his wife, and also to his uh, religious moral beliefs as well. Um, but then there comes a point where he completely loses um, grasp of his faith and loses all uh, his faith in humanity. Um, and it's when he hears uh, the voice of his wife Faith amidst all the voices of the rest of his townspeople. Uh, so they're all, all their voices are sort of mingling together and he can hear them in the background uh, in the forest. Um, and then there's the one voice of his wife that he recognizes and he shouts out, uh, Faith, Faith, uh, like he's losing his faith. Uh, so he's, angry and scared and um, desperate and alone, weeping, and then he sees uh, his wife's pink ribbon uh, on the branch of a tree, and he knows at that moment that, he says, my faith is gone, uh, there is no good on earth, and sin is but a name, come devil, for to thee is thy world given. So it's at that moment that he sees his wife's pink ribbon uh, in the middle of the forest that he loses his faith in humanity. Um, so that's the moment of loss. And there that we have the, the image, the symbol of the pink ribbon being a, a representation of innocence and, and goodness, um, and that being sort of lost in the forest. And then it's interesting, so the devil leaves him there. He's sort of on his own. Um, and then he ends up, Goodman Brown ends up sort of stepping to the dark side, right? Uh, he grasps the devil's staff 
and rushes onward towards uh, the center of the forest, which is the heart of this dark ceremony. And this is where he'll see all of the town's people who he once believed were pious and religious uh, to be congregated in this evil ceremony. So this is where all the witches have come, all the devil worshippers, all the heathens, anybody who he viewed as evil, corrupt, or immoral, and intermingled with all these so-called, you know, evil people are people who he once respected and even who have taught him about his own religion. Uh, so he he kind of uh, goes mad almost, right? He's uh, laughing, cackling to himself, carrying this staff and uh, his own image in the forest is that um, is almost the scariest thing it says. Uh, so at the uh, here he says, uh, I'm maddened with despair so that he laughed loud and long did Goodman Brown grasp his staff and set forth again at such a rate that he seemed to fly along the forest path rather than, the, than to walk or run. The road grew wilder and drearier and more faintly traced and vanished at length, leaving him in the heart of the dark wilderness, still rushing onward with the instinct that guides moral, mortal men to evil. Uh, the whole forest was peopled with frightful sounds, the creaking of the trees, the howling of wild beasts, and the yell of Indians, while sometimes the wind tolled like a distant church bell and sometimes gave a broad roar around the traveler, as if all nature were laughing him to scorn. But he was himself the chief horror of the scene and shrank not from its other horrors. Uh, so he is sort of... Um, brought into uh, this community of sinners and he himself um, grasped that uh, walking stick and entered into uh, this congregation of evil. Um, and then he ends up, he sees everybody he knows, so faces of all the people, uh, the council board of his province, um, the others who uh, are familiar from his congregation, uh, the wife of the governor, all the women of, you know, certain class, and then he said widows, uh, wives of honored husbands, and they were mingled in with uh, all the women who are ir ir um, uh, women of spotted fame. So he's sort of talking about, you know, women who have um, ruined their reputations or who are considered immoral, uh, non-virtuous women, fallen women, uh, prostitutes or whatever. They're all intermingling together in this witch's congregation. And um, he uh, sees, he recognizes faith is there, uh, so he appears that it's both uh, the baptism of himself and faith into this uh, community of evil and sin. Um, so those are the two. They're the two who are going to be uh, enter into this unholy congregation. And then uh, he um, talks about the sins of their all these communities. So he he uh, uh, he he is apparent that they are people who are he he views as sort of hypocrites. So on the surface they're very pious, but uh, and they have sort of secret sins that they've hidden from the public eye. Um, and it's all of the congregation are are here have participated in some way in evil uh, acts. Um, so he gives sort of a list of. Uh, all the sins of all the congregation. Um, so this is the um, this is sort of like the evil minister who's giving a kind of rundown of everybody who's there and all the sins they've committed. Uh, and he says, uh, "Yet here are all they, all in my worshiping assembly. This night it shall be granted you to know their secret deeds." 
how hoary bearded elders of the church have whispered wanton words to the young maids of their households. How many a woman eager for widowed weeds has given her husband a drink at bedtime and let him sleep his last sleep in her bosom. How beardless youths have made haste to inherit their father's wealth and how fair dam damsels, blush not sweet ones, have dug little graves in their garden and bidden me the sole guest to an infant's funeral. Uh, so these are just some of the crimes or sins that the community has committed, either, you know, having an affair or, um, uh, you know, committing infant infanticide or uh, murdering your husband because you'd rather be a widow or killing your father to inherit his wealth. Uh, all of these sort of sins or crimes uh, that the townsfolk have uh, committed uh, that make them sinful and part of this witch community. And then here is the moment of baptism. So they're going to sort of baptize both Faith and young Goodman Brown into this community. Um, so they are the only pairs, it seemed, who would yet hesitating on the verge of wickedness in this dark world. So they're on the verge of being wicked uh, or in, involved or accepted into this dark world of sin, but they're on the cusp. Uh, so their moment is going to happen as a kind of baptism into evil. Uh, they're going to be kind of blessed by this evil minister, and then after that they'll be part of this uh, community of sin sinners. And then in the last moment, um, young Goodman Brown yells at his wife to look up to heaven to resist the wicked one. Uh, and then at that moment, he awakens. Uh, so that's sort of the climactic moment, the turning point uh, in this narrative when he yells at Faith to resist, to resist, to look to heaven, uh, don't give in to sin. Um, but he doesn't know how that if whether or not she was baptized because he in an instant wakes up. Uh, so it says, whether faith obeyed he knew not, hardly had he spoken when he found himself amid calm night and solitude, listening to a roar of the wind which died heavily away through the forest. He staggered against the rock and felt it chill and damp, while a hanging twig that had been all on fire besprinkled his cheek with the coldest dew. Uh, the next morning, young Goodman Brown came slowly into the street of Salem Village, staring around him like a bewildered man. The, old, the good old minister was taking a walk along the graveyard to get an appetite for breakfast and med meditate uh, his sermon, uh, and bestowing a blessing as he passed on Goodman Brown. He shrank from the venerable state as if to avoid an anathema. So there's change and it's apparent that you, young Goodman Brown just wakes up in the middle of the forest at this moment and then comes back to the town. Uh, it's not clear whether he experienced everything in reality or if this was just a dream. Uh, so that's one of the things that's ambiguous in the story. Um, and there is this uh, ambiguity, a mystery, uh, whether or not we as readers sort of accept the fact that has this really happened or is this just his dream and he perceives it as real. So that is unanswered in the story. Um, but regardless of whether it was real or just a dream, um, young Goodman Brown is a changed man because of what has happened. Uh, and he, he shrinks away from the old minister who he once respected. Now he sees him as sort of evil or a hypocrite, um, and he doesn't trust him. Uh, and then he goes and meets all of these people who are important to him. So the old Deacon Gookin, he sees him, he sees Goody Cloyce, all these people who he once thought of as, you know, very good Christians. Now he sees them as, you know, he, he's skeptical, he's full of doubt. Um, that they're good people and now he just believes that they're all evil inside and sinners. Um, so he's been changed from his perception, his view of others has been changed um, from this dream or from this experience. 
and it has changed his whole world view, the way he views others. He's no longer the kind of innocent or naive uh, young man that he once was, who believed in the goodness of humanity. Now he kind of believes everybody is capable of uh, sin and evil, um, and that nobody is to be trusted, even his lovely wife of faith. Um, and his lesson has been uh, that evil is the nature of mankind, um, all humans are evil. So that's basically what he's learned, the, the lesson that the devil has imparted or left him with after this experience. And as a result, young Goodman Brown is uh, a sad man for the rest of his life. So um, at the bottom there, the narrator questioned, you know, had Goodman Brown fallen asleep in the forest and only dreamed a wild dream of being at a witch meeting? Be it so, if you will, but alas, it was a dream of evil omen for young Goodman Brown, a stern, a sad, a darkly meditative, a distressful, if not a desperate man did he become from that night on, or from the night of the fearful dream. So whether it was a dream or not, it still changed him, and he become distrustful of others, desperate, unhappy, um, and, you know, he's no longer the innocent young man that he once was because he believes everybody is sinful inside. Um, so this is something that he's sort of learned. Uh, he thinks all humanity is capable of evil, uh, and he no longer has a faith in the goodness of others. So he's lost his faith. And he even shrank from the bosom of faith. So his wife even is un, she's sort of corrupted or tainted by the stamp of evil, uh, of sin, um, so that he dies. They have children, but his whole life has been covered with depression and gloom. Um, so the last line there conveys how uh, his whole life has been sort of colored gray um, and destroyed from this one experience of this dream that he had. Uh, so it says, and when he had lived long and was born to his grave, a hoary corpse followed by faith, an aged woman and children and grandchildren, a goodly procession besides neighbors, not a few. They carve no hopeful verse upon his tombstone for his dying hour was gloom. So he doesn't live a very happy life at the end and, uh, you know, dies a sad, desperate, distrustful man. So it's not a good ending for young Goodman Brown. Uh, so what does that mean for our larger allegory? Um, it could relate to the fact that, um, you know, he has, he, he's judging people based on, you know, not fact, but just being filled with doubt. Um, so if you think about the opposite of having faith is having doubt. And that can be even more uh, devastating than, you know, realizing truth uh, in some cases. So if you're doubtful all your life, you're just going to be distrustful of others. Uh, you can't take anything at face value and it can ruin your life. Um, so that's sort of what happens to him. He becomes very skeptical, doubtful of others. He can't trust anybody, even his wife. And um, it kind of ruins his life. So this whole experience has basically ruined him um, because he views everybody as uh, sinful uh, and in a way he becomes a kind of representation of that puritanical or very self-righteous kind of uh, mindset uh, that tries to be very moral and is unwavering in its ability to see anything differently. Um, so he's very sort of judgmental and harsh, almost like uh, he views everybody as not good enough or as a liar or sinful. Uh, but he doesn't see how he has also kind of been a part of this community, that he was there with them uh, in this witch community and he grabbed the devil's staff. So I think he's a little bit of a hypocrite too. So. His judgment of others should also be t turned towards himself. And maybe that's part of his sadness as well, is recognizing that even he is not 
uh, he can't even escape sin himself. So it's the condition of all human human nature. We're all uh, capable of evil or sin. Uh, not one of us is perfect. Um, so we all have that stamp of imperfection on us um, from our birth on. So this is sort of uh, Hawthorne's meditation or allegory uh, for human nature and the moral um, and immorality of human nature. So interesting story, a lot of religious uh, allusions in there and a kind of allegorical journey um, about one's uh, spiritual journey as well as the physical journey through the forest. So uh, something to think about, lots of questions there related to uh, having faith or having being filled with doubt, which one is better and how do we hold on to our faith uh, that there is good in humanity uh, at the same time as we recognize that you know all humanity is capable of evil. Can you balance those two things at once? Uh, sometimes it's a difficult uh, conflict.